There's a microphone up here, guys, in the center aisle, so if you wouldn't mind, if you've got a Q&A, uh, don't raise your hand, just line up with that mic, and we're just going to go right in order. If you can try to keep it to one question, uh, no comments or statements or anything like that, it's an actual question that we can answer that being the most important. Thank you. Uh, I get 2% back on my set again. It's not a credit card thing. How much percentage do you think you get? Do you want a business card? Sure. Thank you. I would... Um, I, I'll, uh, the question was, um, she gets 2% back on her city double cash. City double cash is, by the way, a great card for someone who just wants cash and wants nothing to do with miles and points. It's a great card. I have told some people to get it because they don't want to play any of the games in miles and points. However, otherwise, um, I would say that, she, so she has what a we yield on her own, and I get somewhere between 5 and 7% cash back on a, on a per redemption basis. What would the business or first class flights that I take be worth the way that I spend it? Thank you. Uh, you, you commented uh, Delta, JFK to Amsterdam, 300,000 points. I had the exact same experience. JFK, Nice, Amsterdam. And I was clicking back and forth to go 340,000, 50,000, 500,000, 50,000, as I kept doing it. Finally, I just took one of the low ones. What's up with that and why does that happen? So that's, that's Delta. <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, Delta Sky Miles are an interesting currency. So people love flying Delta because they provide a great experience. Good luck. Sam, sure but they were the first U.S. carrier to make their program what's called dynamic. And so they, of all of the airlines, want you to get the least value from your miles. And so what they do is they peg all of the redemption fares to what the ticket costs. And it changes second by second. It makes it very hard to, to plan. The good news is that even though they don't publish award charts anymore, if anyone here is from Delta, I'd love to see award charts again, um, because they don't publish the award charts. I get one for my life, please. still know that their partner awards are technically so on a kind of award chart, and so what you want to do is find the partner flights. Uh -huh. so partner flights are where you're going to get the best value. Thanks for asking. I find it difficult on the sites to buy a cheap economy fair, cheap economy fair, and then upgrade to business or first with points. Is that deliberate or? Yes, it's Thanks. very, very difficult. Yeah, so, so the question is upgrading an economy ticket to business or first using miles or points. Um, it's not meant to be easy, and every airline runs it differently. So for example, United is gonna prioritize the relief passengers. Uh, where American doesn't necessarily prioritize them in advance. Uh, you as a non-status buyer can get an upgrade to for me using the same miles and points. Um, so it really varies depending on the airline. It also depends upon the availability. Each airline is going to release where, a specific where are you going seat, on your uh, or specific fare class to upgrade. So what you're kind of seeing that gotcha. in the industry trend right here is ways to override that. Uh, United just came out with their points program, points plus, where That's you can great. use more points Good to luck. override the system and guarantee You're yourself not doing a business a 17 hours versus in waiting in the queue Singapore, or hoping uh, something will be. So that's kind of the trend that you're going to start seeing uh, with airlines. <laughs> Honestly, I'm not a huge fan. If you're not a status passenger, you don't have elite status, I recommend either going for the economy or going for business, but don't uh -huh. hope for the upgrade game. It's oh, very wonderful. Very it's, it's one of those things that used to be a lot easier. Yeah, and, like and, and decades ago, it used to be a lot easier. Better to do it on because if you get on the way out, it's like, how can you tell this? Um, so we all travel lots of foreign countries, and we use these credit cards in foreign countries. And when you compare the credit cards, you can mention foreign transaction fees. So I was wondering what kind of impact you think that has. It's comparing and choosing a credit card. Sure. Most of the premium cards, so almost any card that's a travel card that has any annual fee, you check the fine print, but most of them today, not always the case, but today will waive foreign transaction fees. Also, Capital One, across the board, any Capital One issued card, no foreign transaction fees. By the way, I'll just add a little quick tip here for, for those of you who talk about foreign transaction fees, ATMs. Um, don't go to a money exchange or, or any type of service you see in an airport. Take your debit card that doesn't have a withdrawal fee for any ATM, such as a Charles Schwab debit card. Go to the local ATM when you land, just withdraw your currency there, and you'll just pay the market rate, what everyone else is paying. There is no commission on that, so everyone needs cash. Hi there, I was wondering um, what the redemption values are 
compare, like, if you were to look directly through the bank portals, like thankyou.com versus transferring to partners? Yeah, that, that's a great question. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so each of the bank, the bank points, so Chase and City, they have a travel portal. And you can look directly in the travel portal. Depending on the card you have, you get varying rates. Like for City, the best you can do is a City Premier card, which redeems at 1.25 cents per point. With Chase, their $95 Chase Sapphire Preferred is the same, but if you have the reserve, you get a little bump and you get one and a half cents in value each. The answer to that is twofold. One is you can almost always do better by transferring to an airline than using the bank portal. Um, I personally set a floor of about two cents in value for every point that I have, and I know that by skillfully transferring, that's what I'm gonna be able to do. If you have tons of points, there's nothing wrong with doing 1.25 to 1.5 cents redemption. Just know that in most cases, transferring will get you better value. The downside is that you're gonna be subject to availability because you need to find the award inventory when you transfer it, so you gotta find that first. And then depending, if you've got a boatload of points, you might spend them through the portal, whereas if you've worked three years to save up 150,000 points, I would just pay cash unless you can beat the portal. Okay, thanks. You're welcome. I was wondering, I, about 10 years ago, I had a Delta Amex card. I canceled it uh, after a year once I got my bonus and the annual fee, which I now understand was probably a mistake. I tried to open it again recently and I could open the card, but not with the bonus. I was wondering if all of the cards are like that, where you only get the bonus once in a lifetime? Right, Amex has added that language now, so you can only get the bonus once in a lifetime. There's, you know, some occasional loopholes or, or slips through the cracks or that type of thing, but in general, it's now once. If you wait, generally, if you've waited at least seven years since you had the card, you will be able to get it again. It's technically a once per lifetime rule, but there's system seem to go back seven years. Um, also, as far as a mistake closing it, only if the only reason you would want to assume it was the gold version, the only reason you want that is if you're using it for the free check.